I catch up with my good mate and one of the owners of Momentum Media, best known in the real estate industry as REB and Smart Property Investment, the advisor. Uh, how are you, Phil? I'm very well, Tom. How you going, mate? I'm very, very well. What I mean, what a week of information. Melbourne's back on track. The Reserve Bank um, reduces rates to unprecedented levels. Um, as we're speaking right now, um, the US um, votes are being counted. Some say illegally, like Donald Trump. Um, uh, I don't believe, like, even though I like the guy, I think he's a little bit over the top with the uh, the, the whole thing's been uh, rorted. What do you think, Phil? It just gives you a bit of insight to his psyche. Imagine doing business with the guy, right? He's um, he's he's been well regarded, I guess, where you sit, that he's done well in business in America for the last number of decades. And I think his uh, philosophy was business was to go hard, go hard all the time and, and use the weight of the, the legal system to get his way across every business dealing. So that's just getting applied. Uh, in a very open world now uh, with, the, with, with the actual election. So that's my view, but who knows? Cl 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 Clive Palmer's in that same mould as well, because every time you see Clive Palmer, he'll just say, yeah, no problems. We're going to be going to the Supreme Court. We're appealing it, right? He's actually, I think as we even speak, he's actually gone to court arguing with the Western Australian border, uh, Clive Palmer. <laughs> he's not scared of being in and out of court. So it's where he spends most of his time, but it seems to work from him, but... You have a look at his reputation and he's, he's quite polarising. You either love the guy or love the guy. And uh, when you're taking people in and out of court all the time, I guess you're going to find yourself in that situation. Now, 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 Phil, can I ask you, we don't have clarity on a US election, but it looks like most likely a Biden win. Do you think, and the people and the conversations you're having with, does that impact Australia in any way, positively, negatively, or indifferent? I think it's got a significant impact on Australia. And, and as we speak right now, Tom, and we'll do a proper election wrap up uh, next week. Um, a couple of states are sort of held in the balance. Um, I think George is about to close down um, and the votes are swinging towards Biden there in Pennsylvania, another swing state. Um, if any of them pop up in, in Biden's favour, it's going to be a Biden win, and we're going to see how that plays out moving forward. There's going to be some key implications for Australia uh, if, it, if Biden does get up. Number one would be his approach to China. It's going to be very different to, um, to Trump's approach to China. I think he's going to have a much softer stance uh, against China and Chinese expansion. Um, he'll probably look to re-engage um, uh, different trade relations with China moving forward and open those up, whereas Trump has been very clear on shutting them down. Uh, the emergence of China is a big challenge in the Indo-Pacific, particularly for Australia. So uh, a stronger China um, that is not really being beat, browbeaten by the Americans is going to put Australia in a pretty precarious position because in many ways, you're going to have our Prime Minister and Australia um, pretty much standing firm and the only sort of strong voice in the Asia-Pacific region, uh, which is, you know, more, um, more forceful against China. So that's a key. Um, point, and we can sort of break that down next week once we know what's happening. The other point is around sort of climate change. Um, uh, Biden will take uh, the Americans back into uh, the Paris Accord um, and how that is going to shape policy moving forward in the States will be a key implication. Again, that's going to put some, some pressure and some strain on Australia because we've sort of stood pretty firm with Trump and Trump's position on climate change. Um, you know, we, we haven't subscribed to the the 50% reduction, uh, or the, the, sorry, absolute reduction uh, in emissions by 2050, we've sort of gone, oh, we'll sort of get halfway there. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on Australia as well. So they're two very um, important and, and, and different factors that will shape um, Australia's future, depending on who actually wins the election. Yeah, good point. So what we might do is next week, we'll uh, do a more in-depth on the uh, USA election. Um, uh, Phil, on Tuesday... Um, the Melbourne Cup uh, day was also the day that we had an interest rate cut. And I have to tell you, whether I'm speaking to agents in Byron, which I was there this week, whether I'm speaking to agents in Adelaide, Cairns, I've just got off a webinar with the best agents of Cairns, um, wherever I'm speaking to real estate agents and Melbourne has gone crazy. When I say crazy, Phil, Melbourne, it is like you have released people out of prison and said to them, 
go do what you want to do. And they've all just rushed to real estate agents there. I mean, prices have gone ballistic and, and properties being sold left, right and centre. Um, Phil, no one picked this. No one picked this was going to happen in real estate. Oh, mate, absolutely crazy. Your story here on uh, realestatebusiness.com.au a little bit earlier, 2nd of November, Tom, 20 million in two weeks, how the St. Cole Kilda agent did it. Um, and it's saying the lifting of the 112 day lockdown to see St. Kilda Sam Hobbs, I don't know if you know Sam, sell five homes agency, last yeah. 14 days, totaling $20.275 million, uh, which he, he has attributed to people uh, reconsidering their lifestyles post COVID. Crazy stuff, mate. Mate, my good mate and client, Matty Steinway, has written for the month of October on his own $1 million in commission in Terrigal. $1 million in fees. I mean, there are some real estate agents that have got a dream one day to write a million dollars for the year. The guy wrote a million dollars. They just are buying them. They're lining up left, right and centre. A property in Avoca. 120 people through in two days. We've got this, but you know, Phil, I'm beginning to think to myself, there is a possibility because being in, being in Byron Bay, I saw the amount of people um, that have sort of moved over there, have left Sydney and Melbourne. I actually think there's a bit of a, because I mean, I was having a conversation with a couple of them and I'm beginning to think there's a possibility that in a year or two years time, when COVID may not be something we ever think about, that these people are going to say, hang on a second, can I live in regional Australia for the rest of my life? There is a possibility that some people have overstepped the mark. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, and only when we sort of fast forward and, and COVID is behind us, we're going to see the practicality of living in, in regional Australia. Now, it's okay now with everyone sort of doing everything via Zoom or or remote working, but at a point in time, things are probably going to go back somewhere to where they started. And uh, you're going to find, I think, a lot of people trying to sell up in regional markets with um, more depressed pricing because there's less um, uh, appetite for those type of properties. And once you sell out of a large capital city, i.e. Sydney and Melbourne, you're very hard to replace uh, property in those markets. So be careful what you wish for. Uh, don't make your decisions... Uh, uh, for the future based on what you're thinking today. This is a challenge. You've got to think about the long term. Yeah. I saw a beautiful uh, documentary, not a documentary. It was Warren Buffett being interviewed by uh, uh, CNN or one of those American channels. And Warren, they, they, they talked to him. They, they kept on trying to quiz him and saying, mate, what, what do you think is going to happen in the share market? What's going to happen in the share market? And he just said, listen, my advice is this. When you buy shares, don't think you're buying shares. Just say, I'm buying a business. I'm buying a business. I'm buying a business. And that business is the business that you've just bought shares in. And you don't make a decision on buying a business based on the media headlines of one day. When you're buying a business, you're buying a business for decades, right? And um, I think you've made a very valid point. There are people that are making pe permanent decisions on a temporary situation. And we've got to be mindful of that. Um, but feel like auction clearance rates sky high, even in the metros, you know, this is not, you know, we're, we're seeing strong Sydney, Melbourne, um, rates are at uh, record lows. Do you think that, um, February, March next year, job keeper going, do you think, you know, mortgage holidays, is it going to have any impact or is this, what's your feeling? Well, I think the, um, and interestingly, uh, the Reserve Bank typically does its decision making thinking about what Australia is going to look like in nine months to 12 months time. Um, its decision making right now is for the now and that's sort of very different for the RBA from how it normally acts and operates. So getting us down to 0.1% cash rate has never been that low. The only way from here is, is in the negative territory and whether or not we go that way I'm not too sure. However the big question is is that how this is going to translate into mortgage rates for, for homeowners and, and investors. So there's still still a lot of discussion around whether or not the bank's going to pass this on. Uh, there is some pretty sharp rates out there. I'm, I'm hearing sort of one point something percent being banded around right now. Most people are the sort of high twos and low threes. I was looking at my portfolio owner this morning, mate. I've still got some stuff in fours that's fixed, which I'm pretty upset about and I can't do much about it. But whether or not we're going to see these reductions passed down 
is one point, but you know, I'm getting a lot of commentary right now, right out of real estate, and everyone is pretty bullish considering this decision. It's sparking and stimulating activity. It's always a tale of two cities, though. I'm also seeing a lot of people coming out saying, what about the poor retirees who are, uh, are less uh, risk, they're more risk averse um, uh, with their portfolios? And a lot of those guys have got their, their, their stuff in sort of fixed, fixed term or, or um, uh, you know, deposit accounts, and they're getting absolute no return on their money right now. And, you know, they're not too happy about the interest rate cuts, um, but most homeowners are. So, Phil, yesterday I went up to a Dalton house opposite Hyde Park and watched a commercial auction of around 20 properties. And the room was full, social distancing. The chairs were really spaced out. I think it was uh, uh, the, the brand was uh, uh, Cushman. Cushman um, uh, Auctions. Yeah. yeah, Cushman, yeah. And, um, and, 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 Phil, what was really interesting... The people that were sitting in the room, most of them were service stations, a bit of commercial retail there. You know, the overall sense of the room, and I spoke to a number of the people that were there, is I'm getting 1% in the bank. I'm going to get 4.5% here. I'm getting locked for 15 years. It's a no-brainer. So what's happened is these assets that were giving 6% returns have now dropped to four and a half percent because you've got this exodus of people with money and there is people with money most of them are over 55 and there's this these people are saying i'll take my one percent out of the bank and i'll put it and i'll get four and a half percent um and that's what we're seeing yeah i was going to ask you was a lot of gray hair in the room there was a lot of gray hair me included. Um, they had more money than me. There was a lot of grey hair, but I've got to tell you, there's a lot of money, Phil. There's a lot of money looking to get parked. There's a lot of money that's looking to get parked, right? And I don't know whether shares aren't the flavour of the month at the moment and people got too concerned about what happened when the share market dropped in March. But what I can say to you is that, um, man, like, there are, uh, look, I mean, having said that, if you're going to get four and a half, five percent net with not too many hassles, of course it's very attractive. My worry is that when you're buying those assets, there's not much more upside because how much can rates get lower, right? Because these yeah. things are done on yields. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, to your point also around uh, demand for property, you know, into 2021, once uh, JobKeeper 2.0 goes, our uh, government stimulus is turned off. We've had zero, I believe, community infections with COVID across the nation for. It was a donut day, as they're calling them now, for, for two, three, four uh, days in a row. So things are going well, Tom. There's a story here that was on smart property investment. Migrants and expats to drive demand in Aussie property market. And this is from your good friends, our good friends over at McGrath Estate Agents. Um, this is a report they put out. Millions of migrants consider Australia their lucky country, inverted commas, attracted by its scenic and wide open spaces, energetic economic growth, stable democracy, world-class educational opportunities, clean air and laid back lifestyle. Expats are already turning home and migrants are expected to follow once the international border reopens. We spoke about this last week, this sort of uh, concept which um, demographer Bernard Salt talks about, the Dubai effect. Tom, a lot of people are going to be looking to park their wealth in Australian real estate and that's going to be a key driver moving forward, whether they're expats fleeing the US and potentially a, a change in, um, in government they're fleeing uh, Europe, they're fleeing the UK uh, as COVID takes hold. Um, they're all coming back to Australia, mate. And as soon as borders open up, there's going to be a huge influx of migrants looking to make a new home here. It's going to be a good driver for consistent property price growth moving forward, my thoughts. Okay, well, I've got to tell you, that's exactly the piece of dialogue real estate agents should have with their buyers tomorrow at open for inspections when they're trying to get a deal across the line. You're here now. You got the advantage, buy in isolation. You're going to have someone from overseas bidding against you in about a year's time. So you can get in right now. Phil, I know that you're pressed for time today. You've got an important commitment. Who are you, who are you lunching with? Is it a, is it a politician? <laughs> no, no lunch, mate. I've got some internal meetings I've got, to, I've got to go to. I've got another couple of minutes, mate. We're all good. But um, sure. you know, I'm quite keen to do a, this wrap up on the election, Tom. I think, um, um, I think there's an opportunity for real estate agents, if you don't actually understand it, for mortgage brokers. Uh, you made a very good point. What does a changing government in America mean for Australia? I think it's well worthwhile everyone being right across this because it's going to change things here. Um, some will say for the better, some will say for the worse, but you need to be across those because you'll be able to talk 
with authority around this uh, as you're helping steering people making uh, these decisions around real estate. Yeah, look, you've made a very valid point earlier on, Phil, and that is at the moment, you, Scott Morrison can take a stand against China because he knows he's got a very, very good friend in the USA. That may not be the case in a few weeks' time. I think January 20, where one person leaves and um, the new person goes in, it's most likely looking like it's going to be Biden. So does that mean that Scott Morrison has to ease off a little bit and realise, hey, I don't have as many friends as I thought I did? Well, potentially. And, and there's a lot of people now chatting about uh, local politics here. And we only saw the, uh, the Queensland election uh, last week. Um, with Palaszczuk government um, getting back in as a Labor government. Uh, a lot of, we spoke about it last time, a lot of the quiet Australians who voted for Morrison in the last federal election were traditional Queensland voters who probably were more blue collar than white collar that would normally have uh, um, voted Labor. So a shift in um, uh, rule in America will shape Australian politics. And you might see this shift of um, people more to the sort of the center or to the left um, as a result of this in Australia, what does that mean for the Morrison government is that it's going to be under pressure in, in states like uh, Queensland uh, moving forward. So this is another part of the, the, the sort of picture of how, you know, the American election will shape Australian elections moving forward. And my, um, my recommendation to a lot of uh, real estate agents and also um, brokers is get a bit familiar with Australia's place in the world right now. Uh, some of the challenges we have to our north um, in the Indo-Pacific and some of the, the great power challenges underway there right now, um, particularly in the South China Sea uh, with what is going on there. Because if you don't know about this, it's probably worthwhile uh, having a consideration about what this means for the nation. Phil, I'd like you next week to give us all, you're a very articulate person. People always tell me that. I've got a neighbour that says, geez, that guy's smart. Um, I want, mate, I want yeah, neighbours not too smart then, mate. Mate, I want you next week to, you know, maybe we can uh, have the uh, the show called Five Things an Agent and Broker Should Know About the Election in the USA to Help Their Business. Because I think, I love it when I meet a salesperson that doesn't sit there and say, hey, listen, buy this cup of coffee. It's good for you. I like the person that says, I want to let you know, you can choose whether you want to buy this cup of coffee, but I want to let you know that this coffee's come from Kenya. And what this means is this. I love it when someone's got a bit of substance and they actually go through a bit of knowledge that you don't know. And I reckon that that's what we can do with uh, the USA election, because there are things that actually can help a real estate agent interpret the data and say to a client, this is what it potentially means for you next year. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, I look forward to that and I'll do some homework for once. All right, Phil, you go in and have a very good staff meeting and you make sure that you don't have your team doing what most of corporate Australia does on a Friday afternoon and work out at around 30% of productivity. <laughs> I'll do my best, mate. Thanks for the advice. Thank you. Go on, Tommy. See you, mate.